Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on this Facebook Live. I'm Saquon. I'm Scott again. You got so much energy. I know. I I'm like, I'm saying it like three <laughs> times. I don't know. Um, hey, that's all right. Yeah. And don't forget, before we get started, you can always watch this, listen to this on your own time, take it with you as you go. You can do that by going to our Inforum YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. That's what I always think of with YouTube. Yeah. And hit that like button. Um, also, you can find us on your favorite podcast platform, whether that be Spotify. Spotify, maybe Apple Podcasts, mm -hmm. and of course, inform.com slash podcast under the Inform Minute as well. Um, first, before we get started, I want to point ahead to some things we were following from overnight, even today, in, in, even right now. Mm -hmm. uh, starting with some breaking news overnight out of Fargo, firefighters were called out to a home um, in the 700 block of 12th Street North in Fargo just after midnight. Yep. Uh, Battalion Chief Ryan Erickson has been telling us all morning that when they got there, flames were shooting out of the windows of the main floor. Uh, they were able to knock it down within 15 minutes, though, so that's some good news there. Very quick effort by firefighters. Um, Erickson tells us no one was hurt in this fire, and actually it makes sense because no one actually lives there right yeah. now, which I thought was pretty weird, uh, which is why you know our team decided to ask them, hey, is this kind of suspicious? Are you investigating that as suspicious? And they tell us they are not at this time. Um, but, of course, uh, we are expecting more information from them later today. So, of course, we'll give you guys that update once we learn more. Mm -hmm. Well, today, the Cass County State's Attorney Office is expected to release new details on what they think led to the murder of a man along the Red River in Fargo. Yeah. We do know that three men are in jail this morning in connection with that death. It's an update to a story that we brought you since Sunday. Mm -hmm. We've been following it continuously since then. When Fargo police found the body of 32-year-old Philip Bergquist in that river. Mm -hmm. uh, sad story there, of course. 38-year-old George Ortiz is charged with murder. 29-year-old jo Joseph Poitra is an accomplice in the incident. And 25-year-old David Reneros is uh, also involved with evidence tampering. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors say Ortiz stabbed Bergquist multiple times during a fight down by the river late Saturday night into early Sunday morning. And then those men dumped the body into the river. That's um, Prosecutors say that surveillance video from the bars and local downtown businesses in that area helped them piece together who might have killed Bergquist. And uh, we're going to continue to follow them in court and let you know of any updates that we get on that as well. They're expected to appear, I believe, today or, or tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, totally. Um, also today, we are expecting to learn the name of an 18-year-old who was seriously hurt after a crash between his motorcycle and an SUV mm -hmm. on the road. Uh, we did learn that the SUV was being driven by a 15-year-old girl at the time. She had two, two teenage passengers inside as well. None of those girls were hurt, so that's the good news out of this. But police got the call at around 3.15 yesterday afternoon to the intersection of 40th uh, Avenue South and 66th in West Fargo. So think just northwest of the Osgood Golf Course there. And that stretch of road was shot down for about three hours yesterday. So if you live near that area and you were mm -hmm. like, hey, what's going on? That was what was happening. Um, so here's what we know. Motorcyclist was heading east on 40th, car turned right in front of him, and he hit the front left corner of the SUV and then was thrown onto the road from that motorcycle. He was wearing a helmet, but still is facing life-threatening injuries right now. Um, so of course, Highway Patrol is saying charges are possible. We'll definitely keep you updated on this and hopefully a quick recovery for that 18-year-old. Mm -hmm. Fargo Public Schools are looking at options to ease overcrowding on the south side of town. School officials say they are working on plans for property that the district already owns near Davies High School. Now, there are multiple reasons needed for a new school there, but the district superintendent says the main thing is giving Davies a primary feeder school. The permanent solution for the land is a new middle school, but in the meantime, it could be used as additional classrooms, yeah. which is a big deal. That'll be taking the pressure off Bennett Elementary, Discovery Middle School, and of course, Davies High. Yeah, that is an overcrowding issue we've been talking about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, also, we know the city of Perm is planning to opt out of a possible ban of THC sales in Ottertail County. So Perm proposed this ordinance draft instead of banning these THC products, and the city would like to create some rules and regulations to guide the sale of them. Right now, it says it would like to regulate THC just like it does with tobacco, and so city leaders say that they've had several businesses that sell the products or are interested in selling them, and that prohibiting them would be infringing on their business. So here's what's next. Dottertail County is going to be holding a public hearing about that potential ban sometime later this month. We'll let you know once that happens. Mm -hmm. This morning, we're learning how many people in our region will be affected by President Joe Biden's cannabis pardon. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for people with federal offenses for the possession of cannabis. 
So here in North Dakota, 21 people are eligible to get that pardon. And data from the U.S. Sentencing Commission shows that only that many convictions have actually happened in like the last 30 years. Yeah. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. We're also learning that number is even lower over in Minnesota. Only three people are eligible to be pardoned there. In total, across the nation, Bar Biden's pardon will affect about 6,600 people. Wow. Uh, also today, Moorhead voters, you're going to have the chance to learn a little more about this proposed uh, library slash community center. Um, so that's going to be on the ballot on Tuesday for you guys. And it's going to ask you to decide on a half cent sales tax increase uh, to fund that um, facility. Of course, it's a $31 million facility that we're talking about here. So uh, big pretty, project. yeah, big chunk of cash there too. Um, so we did get the renderings as well. We've shown those on First News. If you want to check those out, you can just go to our website, inform.com. Uh, but we also heard from Moorhead's mayor, Shelly Carlson. And she said that, you know, the city has been really working on getting community input on mm -hmm. things that they would like to see and trying to incorporate those. So Three informational sessions are taking place today at the Moorhead Public Library so that you can learn more about this project. If you're interested, those are happening at noon, 5.30 and 6.30 tonight. All right, so this is something we've been following a few days now, and that is that uh, dry conditions oh, yeah. with the wind and all of that kind of mixes to make fire danger mm. a hazard right now. So right now, most of Minnesota is actually under a burn restriction. Many counties there are at high or very high risk yeah. on the fire danger map. The maps from the Minnesota DNR show that the state is in yellow and orange on the fire danger map, meaning that high and very high risks. Of course, you can't see that at the moment, but yeah. if you check out their website, you can see exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Essentially, that means burning is only going to be allowed in those areas with issued permits right now. All of this kind of comes after just after, you know, a couple days after a deadly grass fire over the weekend in yeah. Wilkin County. The DNR says a combination of drought conditions, low humidity and dry plants across the state have caused some of these conditions. But according to that grass fire at the time, there was no burn restriction for that Barnesville area yeah. where that man died in, yeah. a, in a fire. Um, so all of these things are just making it so that you want to be very careful right now. If you want to find out more information about those burn restrictions and the current drought conditions, head over to mndnr.gov slash burn restrictions. Yeah. Also, North Dakota's governor, Doug Burgum, has actually denied the requests of tribes for exclusive online gambling rights. This is also something that's kind of generated a lot of buzz around town. Mm -hmm. uh, states Native American tribes asked Burgum for the rights to host sports betting, of course, and online gambling in what could have potentially been a multi-million dollar industry. Well, the tribes are saying it would make up for some revenue lost um, because of the legalization of those electronic pull tab machines. Uh, Burgum says he doesn't believe there's a clear legal path for him to experience and the state's current laws. So if that kind of gets proposed again, maybe in the near future, we'll definitely follow that for you as mm -hmm. well. Well, for coffee lovers, you're going to want to listen up to this one. Oh, yeah. Today is the day to get into the holiday spirit because starting today, you can get hot drinks from Starbucks and one of four new festive cup designs. Those cups are so cute, too. I'm they so really excited. are. We showed them this morning. Yeah. They're really cool, really unique and fun. Yeah. So today is also the day the company starts serving its holiday drink menu. Mm -hmm. I know Lydia was an advocate for this this morning. <laughs> Caribou Coffee yeah. also going to be starting with their seasonal drinks today, too, which is really fun. Um, so uh, they're going to be serving the usual peppermint mocha and uh, chestnut praline latte. There's actually no new drinks this year, just some of those classic favorites. However, they're introducing a new sweet treat, and that is going to be a chocolate pistachio Swiss roll. I don't even know what to like think of that. What do you think? Of, I'm imagining like a cinnamon roll, but like a chocolate mm. version, maybe some pistachio sprinkled on top. Yeah, probably on top, I'd say. I mean, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. Like, kind of like it just looks like a cinnamon roll with okay. some extra, yeah, extra, extra, goodies. extra. Mm, yeah, maybe <laughs> extra we'll have to check that cheer. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Also, hot mic with Dom Izzo, nine to eleven. Mm -hmm. Wday extra inform .com. Uh, We talked about, um, of course, section championships in Minnesota for high school football players. Big deal for Minnesota high school football players, mm -hmm. of course. Um, so that's kicking off today. You can catch all the action on WDAY Extra. Coverage does start live from the Fargo Dome starting at 1230. Um, and I'm sure Dom's going to be detailing a lot of that information for you on his show, Hot Mike, yeah. this morning. So make sure you go join him. Again, 9 to 11, WDAY Extra, Inform.com. Cool. And don't forget, we have a good deal going on right now over on Inform.com. For 99 cents a month for your first three months, you can get an all-access pass to the website. Just go to Inform.com slash subscribe to get that. De that deal, a really good deal. You don't want to take advantage of it because we don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah, seriously, you heard him right there. All right, everybody. Of course, we got you covered starting at 11 again, and then our evening.
coverage starts at 4, going to 5, 6, 9, and 10. And we will be back here tomorrow morning from 5 to 7 for a little Friday fun day. All right, everybody, have a great day, and we'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Bye.